everyone, and welcome back to AI in Action. If you're watching this, chances are you've dipped your toes into the incredible world of AI image generation. You've seen the mind-bending art, the photorealistic scenes, the fantastical creations that seem to leap straight from someone's imagination. It's powerful, it's revolutionary, and it's right at our fingertips. But let's be honest, for every jaw-dropping image you see online, there are probably a hundred, maybe even a thousand, that look, well, a bit off, a bit confusing, or just plain not what you had in mind. You type in what you want, hit generate, and what you get back is a digital shrug. If you've ever felt that frustration, like you're speaking a different language to the AI, then you are in the right place. Today, we're cutting straight to the chase. We're going to expose the top 10 prompting mistakes that are not just wasting your time, but actively preventing you from creating the AI art you dream of. And more importantly, I'm going to show you exactly how to fix them right now. No fluff, no endless theories, just practical, actionable insights that will elevate your AI image game from hit or miss to nailed it. So, if you're ready to unlock the true potential of AI art and finally generate images that match your vision, stick around. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe. Let's dive in. Mistake number one, being overly vague or simplistic. All right, let's kick things off with arguably the most common pitfall. Imagine you walk into a coffee shop and just say, coffee. What do you get? Probably a standard black coffee, maybe a drip. If you wanted a double shot oat milk latte with extra foam and a sprinkle of cinnamon, you'd be sorely disappointed. AI image generators are exactly the same. They are not mind readers. They are literal interpreters. When you type in something like a car, the AI is going to give you a generic, often uninspired default car. It's like asking an artist to paint a house. They'll give you a basic sketch, not your dream home. Look at this. My prompt was a car. And here's the output. Now, what if I told the AI, a vintage cherry red 1965 Ford Mustang convertible cruising along a sun-drenched coastal highway at sunset with golden light glinting off the chrome, palm trees silhouetted in the background. See the difference? We went from generic to gorgeous just by adding specifics. Details about the make, model, color, year, the action, the environment, the lighting, these are your brush strokes. Don't be afraid to be verbose. The more specific you are, the closer you get to your vision. It's about providing context, texture, and life to your subject. So next time, ask yourself, what specific details would make this image truly unique? Mistake number two, neglecting the artistic style. Here's another major one. Many beginners assume the AI will magically know the aesthetic they're going for. But without guidance, most AI models default to a sort of generic photorealistic or digital art style which is fine if that's what you want, but what if you're aiming for something entirely different? I typed a portrait of a woman, and this is what I got. That's a perfectly good, realistic portrait, but what if I wanted something more stylized? Instead, I could say, a portrait of a woman in the style of Art Nouveau, with flowing lines, intricate floral patterns, and a muted color palette. And now, look at the transformation. The AI suddenly understands the artistic language. Whether you want impressionistic, cyberpunk, watercolor, minimalist, surrealist, pencil sketch, or even the style of a specific artist like Van Gogh or Picasso, you must declare it in your prompt. This one simple addition will radically change the mood and aesthetic of your generated images. Are you remembering to tell the AI what kind of art you want it to make? Mistake number three, using contradictory or ambiguous terms. Our third mistake is trying to force conflicting ideas together without careful thought. AI models are powerful, but they're not always masters of abstract synthesis. If you give them contradictory instructions, they can get confused and produce a muddled mess. Consider the prompt, a brightly lit dark forest. Is it bright or is it dark? The AI might try to do both, resulting in an image that feels neither here nor there. Here's what you might get. See how the light sources conflict with the dark description? Instead, think about how two seemingly opposite concepts can logically coexist. How about a dark, enchanted forest with bioluminescent mushrooms casting a soft, ethereal glow on the ancient trees? Now, the dark and light elements are harmonized. 
The forest itself is dark, but specific elements within it are glowing. This provides a clear, cohesive vision for the AI to work with. Always review your prompt for any terms that might be fighting each other. Mistake number four, forgetting to specify the composition and framing. This one is a game changer for control freaks like me. We often focus so much on what is in the image that we forget to tell the AI how we want to see it. The composition and framing are crucial for setting the visual impact and narrative of your image. If I simply prompt a lion, the AI will likely give me a full body shot or perhaps a mid shot. But what if I want to emphasize its power, its eyes, its raw majesty? Here's our generic lion. See the difference with a majestic lion close-up portrait looking directly at the camera with a shallow depth of field blurring the savanna background, golden hour light. Suddenly, we have drama. Keywords like close-up, wide shot, full body shot, from a low angle, bird's eye view, Dutch angle, headshot, or even cinematic framing can completely transform your image. Think like a photographer or a film director. Where is the camera? How close is it? What do you want to emphasize? Give the AI those instructions. Mistake number five, ignoring the power of negative prompts. This mistake is often overlooked, especially by newer users, but it's incredibly powerful. Most advanced AI image generators don't just let you say what you want, they also let you specify what you don't want. This is where you can clean up unwanted artifacts, exclude distracting elements, or refine your output to an incredible degree. Let's say you're trying to generate a beautiful, pristine, natural landscape. If you just type a beautiful landscape, you might get something lovely, but it could also include a distant road, a power line, or even a tiny house. Here's a decent landscape, but notice the subtle, distracting elements in the background. What if I add a negative prompt? A beautiful landscape, negative prompt, buildings, roads, people, oversaturated colors. Look at the difference. The image is cleaner, purer, exactly what I envisioned. Use negative prompts to remove common AI generation issues like distorted hands, extra limbs, or strange text. It's your personal AI cleaner upper, and it makes a massive difference. Are you actively telling the AI what not to include? If not, you're leaving a lot of potential on the table. We're halfway through these crucial mistakes, and if you're finding these tips helpful, make sure you hit that like button right now. It helps the channel immensely, and it tells me you want more deep dives like this. And if you haven't already, subscribe to AI in Action so you don't miss out on any of our future AI breakthroughs and tutorials. I'm a new channel trying to get monetized. Your support goes a long way. Mistake number six, overloading the prompt with too many unrelated concepts. While we just talked about the importance of being specific, there's a fine line between detailed and chaotic. Mistake number six is trying to cram too many disparate, unrelated concepts into a single prompt, hoping for a masterpiece. What you often get instead is a digital jumble sale. Imagine asking a chef to make a dish that's simultaneously Italian, Japanese, and Mexican with hints of dessert. You'd end up with a culinary disaster. AI models similarly struggle when you ask them to combine things that don't naturally fit or have a cohesive theme. Here's what happens if I say, a robot surfing a cosmic wave in a city made of cheese with a Victorian era cat flying a biplane overhead during a meteor shower. Yikes, the AI tries its best, but the result is a mess. Instead, pick a core subject and build a few complementary elements around it. Focus on a unified theme. If you want a robot surfing a cosmic wave, then focus on that. A sleek chrome robot gracefully surfing a vibrant cosmic wave with a nebula in the background, cinematic lighting. Much more impactful, right? Break down your grand visions into smaller, more manageable, and cohesive prompts. You can always combine elements later using editing tools if you really want that cheese city with a biplane. Mistake number seven, 
using vague adjectives without context. We often default to generic positive adjectives like amazing, beautiful, or stunning. While these words express your desire for a good image, they don't give the AI any actionable information about what makes it beautiful. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and AI doesn't have eyes in that sense. If I prompt a beautiful flower, the AI will probably give me a pleasant looking flower, but it won't be your beautiful flower. Here's our beautiful flower. And while it's nice, it lacks a unique quality. Now consider this, a delicate translucent lotus flower with dew drops on its petals, glowing with a soft inner light at dawn. See how much more vivid and specific that is? We described why it's beautiful. What makes it special? Is it its vibrant colors, its intricate patterns, its serene setting, its unique texture? Instead of just saying beautiful, describe the elements that contribute to that beauty. This gives the AI concrete features to generate. Mistake number eight, not specifying lighting conditions. Lighting isn't just a technical detail, it's the soul of an image. It sets the mood, indicates the time of day, and completely transforms the atmosphere. Yet so many people forget to include it in their prompts. If you just ask for a castle, you'll get a default lit castle, likely in bland midday light. Here's a generic castle. And while it's recognizable, it's flat. It lacks atmosphere. Now consider the power of adding lighting. A dramatic Gothic castle perched on a cliff during a thunderstorm with flashes of lightning illuminating the dark stone towers. Instantly, the image is dynamic, moody, and full of life. Think about what time of day it is. Golden hour, blue hour, moonlight, dawn, dusk. What's the light source? Candlelight, neon glow, studio lighting, cinematic lighting, backlit, rim light. This attention to light will drastically improve the depth and emotional impact of your AI-generated art. Are you painting with light in your prompts? You absolutely should be. Before we tackle the final two crucial mistakes, I have to ask, how many of these have you been making? Be honest. Let me know in the comments below and share your biggest aha moment so far. Your feedback helps us create even better content for you. And if you're serious about taking your AI art to the next level, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Mistake number nine, giving up after the first try. This mistake isn't about the prompt itself, but about your approach to prompting. It's about patience and persistence. Many people try a prompt, get an image that isn't quite right, and then give up, thinking the AI isn't capable or that their idea is impossible. This is a huge missed opportunity. AI image generation is an iterative process. It's a conversation. Your first attempt is rarely your last, and it's almost never your best. Think of it as sculpting. You start with a block of clay and you gradually refine it, chip away, add details until you reach your desired form. Let's say I wanted a mystical creature. My first prompt, a dragon, might give me something generic. It's a dragon, sure, but it's not my dragon, so I iterate. My next prompt is a large, scaly, fierce dragon with leathery wings perched on a mountain, digital art. Okay, better. We have more detail, a setting, and a style. But I'm not done. I want more drama. Let's refine it again. A massive ancient dragon covered in obsidian scales with iridescent and tattered wings flying through a cosmic nebula, volumetric cinematic lighting. Now we're getting somewhere. The vision is becoming clearer, more specific, more unique. And for the final touch, I can get really specific with the composition. An extreme close-up, highly detailed of the ancient iridescent dragon. Its draconic retina is on fire. Cinematic film grain, smoldering smoke, curling from its nostrils. Look at that journey. We went from a basic concept to a breathtaking, specific, and powerful image. That's the power of iteration. Don't get discouraged. Tweak your keywords, add more detail, rephrase your ideas, and experiment. The perfect image is often just a few prompt adjustments away.
Mistake 10, forgetting the nuances of language and word order. All right, our final mistake is a bit more advanced, but it's the key to unlocking truly professional level results. It's forgetting that the AI doesn't understand language like a human. It processes it. It associates words with the millions of images it was trained on, and the order and choice of those words carry immense weight. The first few words of your prompt are often given the most importance by the AI. What you place at the beginning tends to be the dominant subject of the image. A small change in sentence structure can lead to a big change in the final output. Let me show you a classic example. Look at these two prompts. Prompt A, a giant man eating a pizza. Prompt B, a man eating a giant pizza. See the difference? In the first image, the primary subject is a giant man and he's eating a pizza that's probably normal-sized relative to him. In the second image, the subject is a normal-sized man, but the object he's eating is a giant pizza. Just by swapping two words, we completely change the focus and the narrative of the image. This applies to everything. A crystal statue of a fox might give you a different result than a fox made of crystal. The first emphasizes the statue as the subject, while the second might produce a more lifelike fox that just happens to be made of crystal. So what's the takeaway? Be deliberate with your sentence structure. Put your main subject and its most important descriptors at the beginning of your prompt. If a specific word isn't giving you the effect you want, try a synonym. For instance, if glowing is too intense, try luminescent, radiant, shimmering, or incandescent. Each carries a slightly different visual weight for the AI. Mastering this nuance is what separates good prompters from great ones. And there you have it, 10 of the most common and most costly prompting mistakes that are holding you back. From being too vague and forgetting the style, to ignoring negative prompts and giving up too early. We've covered a lot, but the core message is this. Prompting is a skill. It's not magic. It's a creative process that requires detail, intention, and a willingness to experiment. You now have the knowledge to avoid these pitfalls. You have the tools to be more specific, more artistic, and more intentional with your creations. You're ready to stop being frustrated by the AI and start collaborating with it to bring your wildest ideas to life. The next time you open up an AI image generator, remember these rules. Think like an artist, a photographer, and a director all rolled into one. I promise you, the quality of your generations will skyrocket. Now, once you've mastered creating these incredible high-quality images, what's the next step? For many of us, it's incorporating them into projects, editing them, or using AI to speed up the entire creative workflow, not just the image creation part. And that's the perfect transition to our next topic. If you're tired of spending hours on tedious editing tasks, you are going to love the next video I have lined up for you. It's called Stop Wasting Hours Editing. These seven free AI editing tools do everything in minutes. In that video, I break down the absolute best free AI tools that can automate everything from background removal to color grading and even video editing, saving you a massive amount of time. So now that you can create the perfect assets, let me show you how to perfect your workflow. Go ahead and click the video on the screen right now to watch it. It's the perfect next step on your AI journey. Thank you so much for joining me today on AI in Action. Don't forget to subscribe, keep creating, keep experimenting, and I'll see you in the next one.